Every seed planted today depends on a whole system, international agreements and regulations that decide how genetic resources are shared, protected, and improved. One big piece of that system, the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture, is at a crossroads. Countries will be meeting in November in Lima, Peru to attempt to modernize it, updating how it's funded, how its benefits are shared, and how it can best keep up with the rapid pace of science and technology. To help us understand what's at stake, we caught up with Yasmina Muminovic, Chair of the Genetic Resources Coordination Group of the International Seed Federation and Head of Genetic Resources at Bayer. We talked to her about the treaty, the issues on the table in Lima, and what this moment means for the future of global agriculture. First, some context. Back in 1992, the Convention on Biological Diversity, the CBD, came into force. It rests on three main pillars, conserving biodiversity, using the components of biodiversity sustainably, and ensuring the fair and equitable sharing of benefits that arise from its use. With that agreement in place with the CBD, that's where the whole conversation around access to germplasm for plant breeding started. Under the CBD, countries are expected to set national rules for how others can access their genetic resources and how benefits from their use are shared in return. But in practice, that model has proven complex, as Yasmina explains. Because it's bilateral, because it slows down the international exchange of germplasm, it's a very complex system for plant breeders to navigate. The latest development under the CBD is that all users of publicly available digital sequencing information are expected to pay. Requirements from the CBD are fairly clear. Plant breeding companies are expected to pay 1% of their profit or 0.1% of their annual turnover into the newly created global fund called the Kali Fund. That is because plant breeding is listed as um, one of the commercial sectors that may benefit directly or indirectly from the use of digital sequence information or DSI. Yet, while the CBD rates that 1% of profit or 0.1% of annual turnover are defined, they leave big concerns unanswered, says Yasmina. One major concern is the scope of the CBD mechanism and its application to plant breeding. Publicly available DSI is used in early stages of research, and DSI is often mixed with proprietary physical genetic material and various other DSI that are generated from it. Genetic sequencing in plant breeding is a valuable tool that enables a quicker, more accurate, and more successful development of new varieties. DSI is not a commercial product on its own, and it's also not an integral component of any financial or final product that would generate financial benefits. This is why we see the rates as excessively high and unjustifiable, given the limited value that DSI provides to the final product in, breed, in plant breeding. Uh, second, contributors to the Kali Fund will also have very limited coverage regarding beneficiary compliance and license to operate. The certificates that would be issued would only cover CBD mechanism, meaning that we still have to deal with all the other commitments and other beneficiary obligations created by other mechanisms and country laws. And that is a significant risk that there will be overlapping obligations, duplicate payments, because beneficiary will be expected to come both from the use of physical material, but also from the use and also from the use of the data generated from that material. And that will be especially complex if countries implement CBD decision as a mandatory expectations in their national laws. So that's the CBD. There's a second separate international regulatory agreement in place, the one we talked about at the top of our conversation, and the one that's set to be discussed in Lima. That's the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources of Food and Agriculture. In 2001, FAO enacted this treaty as a specialized instrument exclusively for the seed sector for plant breeders to facilitate access to plant material under standardized terms. It's a work in progress. At the same time, international treaties working for a long number of years on the enhancement process to enhance the functioning of the multilateral system, which is put in place, which will provide new and hopefully diverse options to companies and to breeders to access the material from the multilateral system, provide better material or wider scope 
of material under the multilateral system and at the same time manage the complex issue of DSI in a workable way. Under the multilateral system of the international treaty, there are several key components set for priority discussion in Lima. The international treaty began the process of enhancing its functioning a dozen years ago. There have been multiple different ideas of what the expanded model should include, but the focus has now mostly shifted to prioritize an increase in user-based payments. The treaty has defined what they've called three hotspots, three major points to be decided on in Lima. Point one, the payment mechanisms and rates. Many parties propose moving to a subscription-based payment method. The subscription would then mean that the company would have to pay based on their annual sales of all the crops that will be part of that multilateral system, the improved multilateral system of the treaty. That would be very complicated to manage. Very simple, unique and only one way to access material would not be workable for very diverse uh, space that we have in plant breeding companies. So we have companies of different sizes operating in different markets, different size markets, working with different number, numbers of crops and of course managing different sales. So in order to attract the most, the highest number of users from the, multi, from, uh, the plant breeding sector, the options to access the multilateral system should also be diverse. So not just a single subscription. Hotspot point number two relates to management of digital sequence information or DSI. Do the payments for DSI go to the CBD or to the international treaty? This is one of the challenges that is brought over to the treaty from the CBD. The treaty is originally created to cover plant genetic resources and information generated from them, which should also include DSI. However, there are challenging situations in some countries that insist on acknowledging the benefit sharing of DSI under the treaty only to those companies that would subscribe companies using the material from the treaty in a single access way would need to manage their payment on DSI differently. And yeah, we see that as a kind of a mismatch in the functionality of the treaty. Hotspot number three is the scope of what the multilateral system would contain. Currently, the, the, the scope of that MLS uh, only covers 64 uh, crops, which are agricultural crops and forages, but many major, mostly vegetable crops are not party or not part of that scope, not part of that system. But expanding the scope to cover all plant genetic resources for food and agriculture would perfectly align with the scope of the treaty itself. Expanding the scope would encourage more companies to use the multilateral system. How else would you expect the companies to be attracted to the system which does not contain the material that you know, companies are breeding. With two separate mechanisms in place, the seed sector is grappling with big questions, says Yasmina. How do each of these systems actually enable seed business to continue to innovate? How much license to operate is then provided to the seed industry at global level? And uh, what is ultimately the complexity for compliance for seed business? That's the most challenging piece because we don't have clear legal certainty that these two instru instruments will not overlap and will not slow us down in the work that we are doing as plant breeders. The big hope for Lima is that the seed sector gets good answers to those questions. One of the biggest goals, Yasmina adds, is... We're hoping for a system that would respond to the needs of modern breeding in a wide range of crops and provide a safe space to plant breeders in a way that protects them from being charged twice for the use of same material or the same information, either under the multilateral mechanism of the CBD or the improved multilateral system of the international treaty. The reason finding clarity is so critical comes down to companies needing legal certainty. The most challenging element in the whole access and benefit sharing space with the CBD and the international treaty included is the legal certainty that users have if they use material or digital sequencing information from the different ABS systems. A holistic approach to ABS, simple and reasonable, that incentivizes innovation, that facilitates international collaboration, and which is built on trust across stakeholder groups, is the most desired outcome for all plant breeding companies 
that are working in a very complex global market. The debates in Lima may seem technical, but their impact is anything but. What's decided there will shape how the world shares its most fundamental resource, the building blocks of every seed, every harvest, and every future innovation. Stay tuned.